we're back on the roof. So we got this guy. Uh, thermostat is calling for cool. I got no airflow. I got nothing. It's not doing anything. So we're going to go ahead and open her up, see what's going on. So here we go. Here's our line voltage. It's going in to here and here. So we're going to go ahead and check for voltage. I'm going to try not to shock myself. Okay, we got Nathan. Okay, so, and then just, yeah, so we have no high voltage. That's not looking good. Uh, we're going to go ahead and check our disconnect. We've got a fuse disconnect here. And one thing I'm noticing, I don't know if it shows up on cam, but you can see it's a little warped. Um, if you look on here, you can see that it's melted a little bit. Um, so that's what it used to look like. This is, you can see it's kind of warped. So there's definitely some melting going on. So we'll see if we're getting line voltage. So our line voltage is coming in through here. So it's gonna be the two middles. So let's see if we have high voltage coming in. Uh, if we do, then we might have a dead fuse. Okay, so we do have voltage coming in. So we probably have dead fuses. So we're gonna go ahead and switch over to continuity. And yeah, so we have no continuity. And we do have continuity, on, so we have a bad fuse. All right, so now we gotta go ahead and check for uh, shorts. I'm gonna check for shorts, for high voltage shorts. I've already done a quick one off of the contactors. I got nothing, so I'm gonna go a little bit deeper. Um, so one thing I noticed here, I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look, I'm gonna show you that. So look at that thing, and then look at this thing here, right? So this is a hard start kit. That's a start assist. That's a hard start kit. That's a start assist. It's still fully connected, right? So, what? <laughs> yeah, so that, that shouldn't, so basically this is a type of starting thing. Um, you don't wanna have two of them in the same circuit. So that's, that's we're gonna probably take that out. Um, so what we do is we need to find our wire. So this is our, um, this is this black wire here, or this kind of black wire is our common. This is our run, this is our start. So if we trace this wire, we can see that it goes into the start assist and then this start assist thing runs back down and then goes into the run capacitor, which I believe is this wire. So um, what we need to do is we will unplug this and plug it into the start capacitor and take it out of the circuit and then we'll remove it. But yeah, so if you ever see one of these and you're wondering what it is, it's, it's a start assist. It's not exactly sure what it is. I'll probably do a video when I do a little more research. All I know is that it is kind of like a hard start kind of kit. It's just a different style. It's not, I don't think it's a capacitor, but it's uh, it's definitely to help the compressor start up. But if you're gonna put one of these in, you need to take that out. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Got this thing taken out. So basically it's, it's, in, it's in series from the start point of the compressor to the start to the run capacitor so basically it goes start goes into here and then a wire comes out of here and goes into the hermetic side of the capacitor and then this right here goes to the common side of the capacitor okay so uh, we basically had two of these devices uh, start starting co components in the same circuit you don't want to do that um, that could explain why maybe the uh, what do you call it why the uh, fuse burned out. Maybe it's pulling too much start amps or it's doing something funky, causing the fuse to pop. Because from what I know, this unit's been uh, popping fuses a lot. We usually don't find any problems to change the fuse. It's fine until the next, uh, until the next uh, season. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and check this and make sure it's good. We're going to go ahead and ohm out common to start. And we are getting 3.3. Okay, and then common to run, we got 1.1, up oh, one, so that should be, uh, 4.3 is our, what we should be getting between start and run. So we're checking start and run. And okay, so it's close. It's never gonna be exact, but I, I would say it's probably fine. Now we're gonna go ahead and check that to ground. And we're basically, a good way to do it is you can check it to ground or you can do the line set. I like to use the piping because uh, it's more of a direct short. Let's see, so now, okay, that was run. So now we'll try common. 
now and we'll go ahead and try start or I'm sorry run yeah all right so it's not grounded so probably something to do with the starting components we'll go ahead and see if we can find a fuse I'm gonna go ahead and check the uh, condenser fan motor make sure that you know seems to be spinning okay make sure we don't have any shorts or anything but yeah so this unit has a crate case heater. I just want to make sure it's not shorted. So we have uh, one wire here and one wire that's here. So we're just going to make sure we don't have any continuity. Nope. All right. And no. So crankcase heater is good. We're going to check the run caps just to make sure. Rule that out. So this is supposed to be a 35. So that's pretty weak. So I'm probably going to change that out. <laughs> okay. Condenser fan motor run cap is 9.9 .9 out of 10. So that's good. We're going to change that run cap. So hopefully I have one. So we'll see. All right. So it looks like I actually had a single 35 micro farad, farad capacitor. Um, so we're going to go ahead and remount that. They just mount back here. Um, get rid of this. Um, yeah, anyway, and then I also got me a fuse. I'm going to replace both of them, uh, but I can't find any shorts. I already checked for shorts on the outdoor fan and the indoor fan motor, nothing. So we're going to go ahead and put this all back together, pop in our new, uh, our new, uh, whatchamacallit, our new fuses, and then we'll cycle this thing on see what happens. So. Got the run caps installed. As you can see, I have them sticking out here so you can actually see the, the specs on it. So when you're doing a PM, you can actually test it and know what you're doing without having to take those stupid things off. So yeah, I made it easier for the next guy. You're welcome. So we're gonna go ahead and put those new fuses in. Um, so those are pretty easy to use or to replace. Uh, generally, you can use, uh, you know, your fingers, but uh, I don't like shocking myself because I used to use needle nose and I kept shocking myself. So I would suggest invest in one of these. Um, I think they're only like 20 bucks, but yeah. So um, yeah, it's better than getting shocked. So whenever you're changing these, it's always a good idea to just change both and call it a day. It's just a good practice, even though one of them's still good. Um, we're gonna change both. Actually, this one's all messed up. Look at this. It's like it's crooked. Yeah, that that wow, that thing blew up. Oh, look at that. Yeah, so, that thing's done, though. And so you could tell somebody replaced one, not both. So could also be that it's super old. But because of that, it could have caused this thing to get hot, and that's why it's all melted. So. Anyway, here's our new ones. We're going to pop those in. Popping in our new one. And uh, please always put the information pointed out so we can see it. Without having to take the stuff out. So, like I said, always treat every job like you're the guy who has to come back. Make it easier for yourself because you'll probably have to be the guy that comes back. And if not, you're helping out your team. There we go. Okay, so we'll go ahead and put this back together, cycle it, and see what happens. Hopefully it doesn't pop. We got the fuses in there. Uh, the thermostat was on a delay, but it just came on. Our start amps is 13.3 for our compressor and 12.8 for run. So not bad. So I, I'm wondering if maybe, maybe this guy being in the same circuit maybe caused an issue of some sort. I don't know. Anyway, we got two new fuses in there. We got a new run cap, uh, and it's just doing good. And it's nice and cold. So yeah, I'm not gonna check the refrigerant level um, just because it's R22, um, and uh, we'll, we're we're gonna. I'm basically gonna check the temp splits. So temp splits are good. I'm not gonna throw gauges on it because uh, honestly they don't want to pay for a refrigerant and the problem with these too is I have the door off so it's not really sucking air through the uh, coil so I'd have to put the door on and of course my wireless probes are leaking so can't use those right now 
anyway, um, and also my meter's down. This is my backup, so that, that's why I don't have my fancy one. But anyway, uh, hopefully this helps you out. So thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe, comment, tell me what a horrible technician I am. Hit that bell notification. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook. Thanks for watching.